It's October the 31st, 2022, and this is Curiously Polar. Hello, welcome back to another episode of our little Polar podcast about everything very north and very south. Ah, we are <laughs> right in the in, in the preparations. Well, not we are. Henry is right in the preparations of uh, leaving us again for a few. Uh, just just a just a brief a brief time this time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that's but that's why we are pre-recording. So uh, don't don't be surprised if the thirty first of October is not the date where you <laughs> listen or get this show. This is just where we're recording this. Um, I just realized it's the thirty first of October. Happy Halloween. Happy hell, you know. <laughs> Don't get me started about Halloween. <laughs> we're, we're, Luckily, we're this is not the Halloween podcast. But a we're, we're trying to hide uh, tonight. Turn off all the lights outside so that we yeah. don't get harassed by the neighbor kids. <laughs> yeah, uh, same, same here, same here. <laughs> Are they? Do they do? Okay, you live in Romania. Do they? Um, do do they trick or treat in Romania? Of course, yeah. I, I mean, everything is Americanized here. Just. <laughs> Yeah. Well, nothing yeah. Uh, wait, nothing against America. They brought us a lot of good things. But <laughs> Halloween weirds me out a bit. Don't, I don't get know me why. started on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um and that's how we lost about a third of our <laughs> listenership. No, no, no. Everything's fine. We are um curiously poor and we want to talk about well, something okay, so how do we shoehorn this into the Arctic and Antarctic? Uh, very easily let, let me let me <laughs> everyone is by, by now <laughs> everyone but everyone by now has uh, read the headline so you know that this is about uh a, sh a ship in sweden a ship sweden right, actually, is not yes. really that arctic well it is an arctic country so it's part of the um arctic um arctic environment and to be fair, we're talking about a shipwreck that has been discovered in uh, the Baltic Sea, and the Baltic Sea is one of two uh, non-Arctic waters which actually freeze over during winter and create sea ice. Hence, we can actually include them into the polar sphere if we ah, by, find... By one special definition of the Arctic. They're probably more, <laughs> but that's... <laughs> The one that comes to my mind. Right now. Well, I, I've, um, I know there are there are various different definitions. There are geographical ones. There is a, a temperature-based one, um, tree line, and so on and so on. So, yeah. the the a ship has been found. Yes, you brought us the topic actually. I, I I saw the link and I posted it, and you said, "Hey, sure, let's let's talk about that." It's That's, it's a it's a great topic. So. Um, a Swedish scientists have um, have found a shipwreck, or actually a number of shipwrecks, just right um, in front of Stockholm. Um, there are plenty of waterways around Stockholm, and they are filled with shipwrecks. And they had a hinge of uh, a very famous shipwreck. Um, and I'm not sure if you if you're aware of the story of the Vasa. Well, I, let me let me tell you a story. I have been in Stockholm and I have of course been in the Vasa Museum so I stood in front Absolutely. of the actual Vasa which Terrific. which sank pretty much on its first on its maiden voyage Absolutely. Uh, in the yeah. harbor and uh, and was lost for a while and then they dug it back up and preserved it and and put it in some resin and made it like <laughs> it last for for the next few centuries um and they they built a pretty nice museum around it so mm -hmm. um it's a very nice looking ship but it was not seaworthy <laughs> at all as i can tell yeah a, a couple of things went wrong when that ship uh, had its maiden voyage and uh, was put into water um and it certainly undiminished a little bit the reputation of the shipbuilding nation sweden um luckily that has changed and uh, a couple of sister ships have been built actually three more um if i remember correctly, um, the Applet, uh, the Kronan, and the uh, Skepter have been built after the Vasa on the same uh, blueprints. They have been modified slightly. Um, however, one ship was not really successful um, either, and uh, two others like Kronan and Skepter have sailed heavily and for a long time after they have put into service. And since they have been uh, built in a time where the 
uh, rulers in Sweden, particularly in Stockholm, tried to protect their waterways and uh, tried to cut off those numerous channels to actually reach Stockholm, they deliberately sank uh, ships at the end of their life cycle, if you like. So they took them out into the um, canals and sank them to block those channels for uh, ships to guide them through one particular channel. And that reason herefor was that they've built a fortress there, um, the Vaxholm uh, fortress. You and can see this on the map here. Exactly. That's just out of Stockholm, not far away. In the middle of, uh, of the water, so on an island. Exactly. It's much, one yeah. island. It has uh, two beautiful uh, small canals around it. So it's easy to control and by that easy to take sight as well. And it minimizes the risk of uh, warships um, um, sailing into, into Stockholm. So they try to cut off the canals around it and sank those ships. And one of the ships that actually was sank was the applet, the sister ship of Vasa. So, so, he so the Vasa sank by itself and the <laughs> other one that they just found what was the name again applet the, the apple uh, oh the applet the apple they sank that on purpose yes exactly um the the reason why it's dis been discovered just now is that the whole area is um under military uh, rule is not the right uh, way to put it uh, under military ban so you're not allowed to dive there uh, without special permission. So the leading shipwreck museum in uh, Sweden has had a hinge about that wreck for quite some time. They were actually looking for two other wrecks um, and they got into a partnership with the um, Royal Swedish Navy. They commissioned a ship to that as well. And with the help of the Navy, they sent divers down and it's a... Mm, it's not very clear water. Let's put it that way. Very muddy. There's a um, video. Let me let me play that here while uh, you're talking. It's very muddy water. Yeah. It's it, it's very very muddy. It's um it's not much to see. Um and when they went down, they suddenly found at the bottom of uh, the canal uh, a lot of of stones, a lot of rocks, and out of the rocks there was some um, wooden structure looking out. And by that, they actually identified then the type of ship and just realized it looks uh, very much like the Vasa. Um, hence, as a sister ship, it took a while to identify it as the applet. And then they found that there are actually a couple of um, alternations from the original blueprints from the Vasa. So it's not just a one-by-one -one copy. They actually took into consideration why uh, Vasa sunk. So the applet is actually a bit wider, uh, a bit um, higher. So... The Vasa sank because it was top heavy, right? It didn't. Yeah. It 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 pretty much fell over, so to speak. It rolled over with yeah. uh, almost no wind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a bad idea to make a ship this week, but okay. it looked nice. Yeah, it looked really, really it does look still does look very nice. <laughs> yeah, but the the amplit, as I said, was just made a bit wider, um, and hence. Uh, it was better in the water, and the applet also was used a couple of years before it then uh, got decommissioned and uh, sunk. You can see um, on that video and also on the pictures published all over the world, you can see uh, that the, the ship had two battery decks, um, so whether the cannons would have been placed. Uh, so you have some uh, squared portholes there uh, for, the, um, for the guns. And um, yeah, it was a very pretty ship, very well used. But then, uh, yeah, I got a different <laughs> different intention to be used as a blockhead for other ships to come into the place um, or not come into the place, uh, hence sank shortly uh, in, in front of that fortress. I find it really interesting that they sank a ship there, which probably has to mean that they didn't have a use for the ship because otherwise couldn't you just... Um, couldn't you just throw things down there that you don't need, any rubble and that kind of stuff? It looks like they did that as well. So um, there, there are, there's a lot of debris on that ship. So uh, when you go through that entire video, when you see all the pictures published, um, the first wooden structure they, they found was um, covered with rocks. So I, I think they, they've put down everything they could find. And yes, obviously, uh, when you sink uh, a ship, 
to use it as a barricade, then uh, it's the end of the life cycle of that chip. So there, there has been uh, probably a, a key reason why that chip has been um, taken out of commission. Um, however, the scientists uh, try to identify the for sure the um, identity of the ship, but also where the wood came from. So they actually went down, and that's a very terrific uh, undertaking, with hand saws, and took pieces out of that structure from underwater okay. to to um, recover the wood pieces <clears throat> and an analyze them um, with tree rings, with um, fancy scientific methods. And they found out that the piece of wood used for the amplit has been common from uh, a Swedish lake, the, the second largest uh, Swedish lake, uh, Melaren. Um, so a lot of wood for shipbuilding has been uh, originating from there. And they could also identify the um, the year, which was 1600, I think 34, but please don't quote me on that. Um, oh no, that can't be because the ship was launched in, in, in 1629, so it must have been a bit earlier. But around that area, uh, around that time, you can um, do this. Are there like tree ring analysis and these kind of things that allow you to to pinpoint that pretty well? Exactly. What's also interesting um, that the Swedish king, um, despite that disaster of Vasa, trusted the same shipbuilder, the same shipyard, <laughs> to actually build a new ship on the same blueprint. I'm, I'm pretty sure they were buddies. They were like playing golf <laughs> together or something, you know, very, very good friends. So you you messed up. Um, I'll let you try again. Yeah, possibly. Indeed, um, the museum uh, of Rex, uh, the Swedish museum of Rex which initiated um, that expedition, is now trying to uh, analyze the ship a little bit more, explore a little bit more. They uh, took a lot of uh, videos and photos and actually create a 3D model now. And uh, it's not decided if that ship will be recovered and put into a museum as well, or if the Vasa Museum will be extended um, whatsoever. But it's a really interesting uh, process to see, and we're going to um, post a a link to the museum in the show notes because uh, it's really nice to just follow up on uh, on that story with um, the museum. They've been looking for that ship for quite some time and they found two shipwrecks which they thought to be the applet in 2019 and just realized it's not. It were two other ships um, from slightly later in, um, in that same period, around 1640, 1650. Um, but despite the fact that they found two other ships, they didn't want to give up. They, they had the idea of uh, finding that sister ship because it also gives a very interesting um, story to tell how the shipbuilders actually improved the um, structure of the um, ill-fated Vasa. So they knew that the ship was down there. Um, that was documented, by the way. Uh, I've, I've dropped a little pin here in the approximate uh to place where, where the ship is. This is like a south, a southern of the Vaxholm Fortress. Oh, the pin goes away when I move the map. So somewhere around here, um, that thing is. So they knew it. They knew it was there. They just never really went to look for it, I guess. Yeah, because it's a banned area, so you're not allowed to dive yeah. there without special permission and, and getting that and, permission. And whoever had the permission didn't found other things more important than that. Yeah, well, so um, the, the, the Royal Navy, obviously, um, who is in charge of that. So it's a military um, ban zone. And uh, now they actually could get the Navy uh, into the same boat um, right. to use that figure of speech. And so my question is now, are they going to extend the Vasa Museum and bring that ship up? Or is that going to stay down there? That, that's not really clear. So that's just really something... Um, or do they have the Vasa Museum and next to it the Applet Museum? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Um, it's it, That's not, not decided yet. It's not really clear. Right now, what they want to do is uh, take more samples, um, try to get a, a very thorough, very detailed model of that ship to actually also use it as a base to understand um, how the large Swedish warships have evolved from that very ill-fated, unstable Vasa that has just a, a reputation of being very badly built in a way that just had no chance to survive that maiden voyage um, to those amazingly seaworthy, humongous warships that 
made Sweden this great power in the 1600s and controlled um, the entire Baltic Sea in that area. It's there true. is a humongous development in there, and that ship is one cornerstone in that development. So it, it looks like between the Vasa and the Applet, they had a big jump in the quality of shipbuilding. So that must be the time when they learned how to do it right. Yeah, I mean, um, when you when you lose a ship like that, um, just on the main voyage, it, it's expensive. It's yeah. expensive, and it gives you a lot of chance to learn. <laughs> yeah, or you, or, or you have to learn because if I mean, if you if you look at the map of Sweden and around Stockholm, uh, it's there's a lot of water there. You need ships for all sorts of things. It's yeah. uh, easier on ship than on a vehicle on land in most cases. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> So what they uh, now do is they measure um, the the entire ship. They uh, try to find the um, similarities and the differences between the right. two ships, between Vanza and Applet. Um, they collect material for creating that 3D model. Um, they take more wood samples to um, see where the trays have been uh, felt and where they've been cut. Um, they study archive material to provide um, a better starting point for dating and for, for measurement of the history of that ship. And they try to find the similarities and differences um, in details in construction methods for the both ships. And hopefully at one point they decide to lift it and um, yeah, bring it probably into the Vasa Museum, extend the museum. Um, I don't know how much space there is Put around. It on top. Make another floor on the top. <laughs> Um, so so yeah, wow, uh, that is pretty pretty awesome. And and uh, of course, it again challenges my worldview in one way that uh, archaeology so far I've, se I've I've more connected with some people digging in the dirt and uh, brushing off uh, dust from things. But this is a very different kind of archaeology. It, it's really interesting when you um, when you know a bit of Swedish. I'm sure you will find also some 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 English. Um, reports online now um you can hear the divers telling you the, the first one one and a half meters of the water is it's kind of grayish muddyish and after that it's pitch black you don't see anything and then you you go down to the ground where you have the the rocks um on the on the ground of the canal and you, you put the light on and then you just get the one two meters in front of you um illuminated and the excitement the divers had um, finding that wreck is just pretty, pretty amazing. And just also heading back to the discovery of the Endurance um, last year, no, beginning of this year, that's just been breathtaking as well. So just in that line of, um, of discoveries of those old wrecks, Swedish waters are particularly um tre uh, treasure treasure full there you have plenty of racks we have plenty of um uh, yeah of old ships from that period getting to know one more in detail now is really an amazing um, experience it, th those visuals they remind me of some of the very deep sea cameras that uh, went down to the titanic and other shipwrecks and it's there. it's nowhere near that deep <laughs> no no of course not this is well, if if they sank it to block other ships, it can't be that deep, right? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> anyway, um, what a story! Let's uh, let's wrap up our episode with that. Um, thank you so much for digging out the details. All I did is drop a link in our chat, and you went like, "Oh yeah, that's a story. Let's make that into a story." <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> that's how it goes. So um, I'm very happy that I, for once, managed to contribute something. To this show we are going to be back um soon hopefully with more um over at curiouslyporter.com until then everyone take care and 